Yeah, this is the old conductor welcoming to the shop the Timber Heritage Association. Today our roundhouse crew is working on replacing the bearings and the Bear Harbor Gypsy here. It was one of the very few locomotives that, that ran from Bear Harbor down to Piercy. And we'll carry cover that story more in the future. I'm leaning on a device here called the Blue Flag. The Blue Flag is a device uh, hooked to a, a piece of, uh, of uh, equipment or attached to the track and indicates there's work being done. going on here is uh, we're bringing up a coal fire. We're going to use it to, uh, to melt down Babbitt material. So what we got going on here is a nice hot cherry fire. We're going to make a little bit of a volcano shape to it. We don't want to go down too deep because what we experienced earlier today was we had that cauldron sitting down so low it was setting right on the vent. Uh, yeah, and now we're going to start heating this cauldron up. We've got a little piece of Babbitt material, old Babbitt material in here as kind of a temperature indicator. When it goes molten, we know we can put in our fresh piece. We have an ingot of Babbitt material. This is a, a copper-based Babbitt. It's basically going to function as a thrust bearing on our, on our brasses here. These are the brasses that the wheels roll inside of and the, the Babbitt material on here acts as a thrust bearing. This is the original Babbitt. We'll be pouring new. These broke off, the little, little joint they had holding them all to these blocks busted loose and these dropped on us last year, so we're replacing them with new. We're going to upgrade the oilers. These, uh, these brasses have a hole in them that allows oil to come from the, uh, the machinist who's maintaining the locomotive. Um, the old oiler method was really poor and meant that these blocks ran dry a lot of the time and that's why we think the Babbitt material pushed off was the inadequate oiling. So we're upgrading the oiling system on these as well. This will go into the cauldron here and get melted at 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we're then going to pour that into this mold that we've created with clay around the outside. When that cools, we'll then peel away the clay, clean up the burrs and whatnot, and then put these uh, brasses back into the locomotive, put the wheels back under the locomotive, and set the locomotive back down on its front wheels. Then we're going to proceed to do the same thing to the rear set of wheels on our locomotive. They're not yet. <laughs> it takes a lot of time to transfer that heat into the It's melting. The block. No, it's there's a puddle. Yeah. Yeah. It'll eventually just go boom. Yeah. Because the heat's gonna overcome it. Again, the, the idea is if you overfan, it'll create a hole in that yeah. fire. Unlike ice, this the yeah. stuff is still frozen goes to the bottom. I think we're there. Uh not quite. What about the impurities? They'll that, come to the top. They'll be the that's first what I'm thing doing to right touch now. the wheel. See? That's what I'm getting them all into one spot. I think yeah, that's it, Dave. Okay. Okay, so here's the thunder tube. Now, we want to do this in a nice, neat, no trip fashion. Okay. One, two, three, flip. One set. Mm -hmm. We just have to wait for the paint to dry. <laughs> yeah. Go have lunch. Give it a long time. No, there is time. there is no paint to dry. Um, I suspect 20, 30 minutes, and they're going to be hard. Yeah, that brass will will, will pull heat out of it. Are we going to go back and polish this or surface this somehow? 
Not that you really need to. Um, it'll wear we'll probably shape quick. it. We may have to shape it with a file to it's get file. it reassembled. Because mm -hmm. if it's a, if its assembly thickness is too much, um, we have a fixed distance between the wheels that we have to yeah. contain our, our total width. Well, because in. we have like yeah yeah high spots. Yeah. You can you can plane it with a rasp. You use yeah, like a farrier's rasp because okay. it has the, the sure. curved teeth in it. Sure. Mm -hmm. But what about are we concerned about a smooth a polish? No, no. no. All it has to do is fit in there. The, the wheel. Bring the Babbitt. We're shaving Babbitt's. This is the Babbitt. This is the brass. This is Babbitt. It's like yeah. solder. It's a, it's a high end solder. It's a, th a thrust bearing. Basically, keeps the wheels from hitting the actual brass. There's this interesting thing about bearings is if you have a bearing and a shaft that turns in it, they're made out of the same material. It'll try to merge, and it creates what's called galling. And you'll get grooves and chips and things, and eventually the shaft will quit turning. Because the two metals have the same melting temperature, and they both reach it at the same time. But if you have dissimilar metals, then you get a phenomenon where one will slide over the other one. And in this case... Depends on the some dissimilar metals. Some dissimilar metals will never... Will never be friendly to each other because like the babbit is aluminum. quite soft. And the word it is sacrificial. If the, if the oil runs out, this melts and the steel doesn't. I think, I think we, we calculated that the Bear Harbor, in order to melt these, would have to be pulling seven million tons of logs traveling over a hundred miles an hour. Look, not our. One little passenger car full of 12 people, 300 feet. Yeah. Old claim they used to do that, but they didn't really. So where's this line looking from? The line, it's this, you can feel it around yeah. the perimeter. It's where it the underneath this is that. Like on here. Wiggle the copper tube. Well, I see by the old pocket watch, it's time to climb on board and head on down the track. We thank you for joining us today through our journey to the Timber Heritage Collection. Stay tuned for more programs. Yeah, someone's got to do the glamorous work around here. That's always me. Everybody else gets the credit, I always end up doing the groundwork.